Welcome to my garden. Not the most exotic or far-flung of locations. And yet all around me, there's the most incredible miniature world. Scratch the surface of almost any garden, in fact, and you'll find it's jam-packed with literally thousands of tiny creatures. All of them locked in a deadly struggle for survival. Most of us completely ignore the world at our feet, but I've come up with a plan that I hope will change all that. I'm going to shrink myself and a team of people literally to the size of a bug. And we're going to explore that strange world, reveal some of the extraordinary animal dramas that happen in a garden like this nearly every single day. We'll be filmed by dozens of miniature cameras. They're scattered all around the garden. And our mission is to get from one end to the other. When we get to the terrace, that's where we'll expand back up to our normal size. From up here, it all looks pretty harmless. But I bet down there, when we come face to face with the garden monsters, it will be a very different story. Check Laura, can you pull up the Rothery cameras? See anything unusual? <laughs> yes, it's working. How about this one? It's working, Nigel. Come on. Fine. All right, both of you set. Ready. Ready. Let's hope this works. Good luck, everyone. I beg to come on this. Uh, we'll be okay. All systems engaged. Stand by for compression. Initiating final countdown. 30 seconds. Do you feel alright?
Yo bien, no lo sé. principles, our main risk factor is cardiac failure. Basically, Doug, if we don't resize within 23 hours, our hearts are going to pack in and we're going to die. But that shouldn't affect the mission, should it? No. And when we've got plenty of time... Open the door! bad feeling about this mission. Diary entry. We've shrunk down to just half an inch tall. There's all kinds of strange stuff happening to us. When I'm full size, my heart rate is around 60 beats a minute. But being tiny, it's shot up to over 3,000 beats a minute. Thirty years in the bush. I've never heard anything like that. We can hear much higher frequencies now. That's another side effect. What's happening? I've got an idea about what's bombing us. I think it's safe for me to have a look. Oh, well, hold on. Where are you going? I won't be long. Be careful! Don't worry, this is a cinch! Here we go. I feel like Spider-Man, so powerful, so agile. This is fantastic! Not too far, Nigel. Okay, stop going on. This is what we came for. It's as I thought. Look at them. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, this is magnificent. Wow. Laura, I'm eye to eye with a cluster of aphids. Gardeners call them green fly. 
I never imagined they'd be like this, just like living emeralds. Look at that. You can see at the end of one of them, there's a glistening droplet shining in the sun. That's honeydew. That's the stuff that was bombarding down on us. And honeydew... That's just a posh name for bug poo. And I can't resist. I'll be the first human ever to take some honeydew direct from the bum of an aphid. And let's try this. Oh! Ooh. It's such a sugar here. You know, I like chocolate and stuff like that, but when sugar is that concentrated, it is disgusting. And in the summer, there is tons of it raining down on cars on houses. It's a nuisance sometimes, but to some animals, it's a very valuable commodity. One bug's waste is another one's dinner. Look up there. There's black ants, they're scurrying right in amongst the aphids. And they could slice the aphids in two, but they don't do that, they're too valuable. What they're actually doing is protecting them, because they want that honeydew. And you can see one there, it's caressing one of the green fly with its antennae, and gently stroking it, and there, there's a glistening drop of honeydew at the other end, that's a valuable food for the ants. Two animals depending upon each other. The ants get food, and in return, they're the green fly security force. They protect them. That's why these things infest plants in the... incoming predator. Nigel, you've got company. It's a bucket. <laughs> wow, three, four, five, six. A gorgeous seven-spot ladybird. And I think I know what she's up to. I'm going to see if I can follow her. I've got to be a little careful here. This ladybird certainly isn't here to fly away home. She's here for lunch. 42 kinds of ladybirds in Britain. This one is a vicious predator. And I'd like her to move on a bit. Let me try something. as hard as nails, like a miniature armoured tank. And she's going straight for a cluster of aphids. I can hear the sound she's squelching away there. She's sucking the body fluids from the aphids. Green fly, no defence. There's a security ant attacking what can it do against a ladybird, though? It's scrabbling to find perches on the wing cases, but its jaws are useless against that armour plating. The ant's curving its abdomen now, is squirting formic acid, and the ladybird, she doesn't like that. I'm in two minds about this. You feel sorry for the aphids being gobbled like that. But if there weren't predators like ladybirds, the whole of the world would be submerged by aphids. It's time to go. Doug, I'm back in. Let's move. So tiny makes us easy to prey. That's why we painted the truck like a wasp. Black and yellow, they're universal warning colours in nature. So anything that's eyeing us up for lunch should think twice. Nigel, where do we stop? Anywhere's good. I want to get my stuff together. I'll need the underwater camera. Stun gun. Oh yeah, good idea. We don't know what's out there. We'll only use that in self-defense. It's all clear, Nigel. I promise you'll be back by nine. I promise. We're about a quarter of the way along our planned route, and I'm leaving the safety of the truck so I can get down to the pond. 
water is a magnet for wildlife, so this should be an ideal place to track down some of my garden's miniature marvels. Being shrunk down to this size, it makes you feel so weird. There's side effects I hadn't even thought of. When you're tiny, you've got a relatively large surface area. I'm losing a lot of heat, and even on a sunny day like this, I'm in constant danger of hypothermia. So that's why my metabolism is working at such a cracking rate. It's my body's way of keeping me alive by generating heat. And there's a catch to that, I've got to have unbelievable amounts of food. To survive at this size, I need the equivalent of 500 pints of beer. I've got this high energy drink. As long as I keep topping up with that, I should be... Laura, that sound again. Anything on the cameras? Nothing. As far as I can see, you're on your own. Oh my, did you say? It came out of nowhere. I'm, I'm really sorry. She's hiding right under a rock. I'm pretty sure it's a female. They grow much bigger than males. As long as she doesn't see me, I'll be safe. Just don't take any more chances. Oops. It's a common toad. And how can anyone say they're ugly? She's a beautiful old girl. She probably is old as well. They can live to a ripe old age over 40 years. Gardener's friends, they mop up so many slugs and other pests. And a full-grown toad, a big one, can eat prey as large as a mouse. So I've got to be really careful here. One wrong move, and she'd swallow me whole. Nigel, I've come up with another route you can take. Thanks for that. But I've got a plan. I think I can trick her. And this is going to help. The thing about toads, they're programmed to attack objects that move horizontally, wiggle along the ground. Their main prey is worms and slugs. And if I use this to make myself look tall and vertical, it shouldn't elicit the attack response. And fingers crossed, I should be safe. see whether this works. Did you know one toad can eat 100 flies in 10 minutes? Bloody nutter. Did you know a toad can suck in its eyeballs to help squash food down its throat? Shut up, Mal! It's worms! Was it the toad making that noise? No, toads don't make noises like that. Whatever it is, it's still out here. It's the southern hawker dragonfly, and she's egg-laying. You can see the abdomen's curved round there. That's why country folk used to call dragonflies horse stingers. When they curve their abdomen like that, it looks like they're about to sting. But dragonflies are harmless, of course. 
she's probing around there, trying to find the best bits of stem to slice into and lay her eggs. She will lay up to 30 eggs. I think she's laying on now. There. I can see the egg laying tube, the ovipositor. It looks like a sting. This is such an intimate moment, being this small and seeing these things. The minuscule eggs will hatch into nymphs that will crawl into the pond and grow and grow. And those are the monsters I want to see. Nigel, we're just pulling off the path and into the rockery. What's it like down there? Everything is absolutely stunning. I'm going to get down as close as I can to the water's edge. The more I explore, the more I'm starting to realise just what an alien world it is down here. I know it's only my garden, but I feel like I'm on a different planet. Dazzling, and they're certainly not a danger to me. They eat much smaller prey, and at the moment they're more interested in each other. It's a mating wheel of damselflies. In France, they call it le coeur, the heart, and you can see why. The bright blue ones are the males. They grasp their partners by the neck and hold tight, and they carry on holding them even after they've mated. That's to stop rival males from getting in. They're guarding them. He'll only release her once she's laid the fertilized eggs. I'm going to try the underwater camera. I'll patch it in. This little beauty is my underwater spy miniature camera. So fingers crossed. And down it goes. The signal's good, no break up with the picture. And straight away, gorgeous mosquito larvae. They're hanging down from the surface film. They've got bristles around their mouths, almost like moustaches, and they use those to draw food in. What I'm gonna do is dive deeper. The creatures I'm after, they'll be lurking at the bottom. There's someone moving. And there, there's the predator I've come to see. That's the top hunter in my pond, a young dragonfly. Gruesome looks. See those goggle eyes, it hunts by sight. It's nasty spikes at the tips of those jaws, and because they're hinged, it can jack knife them open to grab prey. Wow, let me rewind that. It can strike at lightning speed. In just 25,000th of a second, it can shoot out those mouth parts. It's 12 times faster than a human blink. And this one has seen a fish. I am so glad I'm not down there. in while I was watching the dragonfly nymph and it's too heavy to walk on the surface of the water not strong enough to break free and this is a nightmare It'd be like drowning in treacle 
and the nightmare is going to get worse. Look over there, pond skaters, and they hunt at the surface of the water. They're attracted by ripples, and the death throes of this wasp, they're drawing them in. Like David and Goliath, the wasp dwarfs the pond skaters, but because they can move freely, the bigger insect, it's got no chance at all. Dog, where are you? Can you hear me? Dog! Call of nature. Everything all right? The pond skater's lifting its head. You can see its mouth parts. What it's going to do with those is stab them like a stiletto into the wasp. Ah! The wasp is being eaten alive. There's two tubes in the mouth parts, one for injecting salivary enzymes. It will digest the wasp from the inside out. The other tube is like a drinking straw and it will suck up the liquefied portions of the wasp's body. What a meal! And you can see there it's sucking up its food with relish. There's four or five pond skaters on the wasp now. They're all probing it with their mouth parts. And that is just like hyenas converging on a carcass. And this really brings it home. At this size, nothing's safe. And that includes me. Underwater signal's dead. What's up? Yeah, I think they've swallowed the camera. Those monsters down there, they'll hoover up anything that moves. I think you should head back. If you can cut through the reeds, we're up in the rockery. Yeah, thanks. I'm already on my way. I've just spotted something that I've got to take a look at. Check this out. We're in luck. We've got a hatching dragonfly. It's going to transform right in front of my eyes. This is a magical metamorphosis. A tadpole gobbling pond monster. And it's going to transform into a beautiful flying adult. Those vicious spikes on the front legs, you can see them there. It will use them to impale midges and other insects in mid-air. This is going to be a top aerial hunter. Huh. There, out it pops. And you can see the adult body now. But this insect is so vulnerable, it's so soft and pliable. At the moment, it's a tasty morsel for any passing bird. And the priority now is to get airborne as quickly as possible. And you can see the fluid pumping through its body. What it's doing is it's actually going to force that fluid through the veins in its wings, make them rigid, harden them up. And look, they're unfurling right in front of me. This life cycle is really astonishing. Dragonflies spend 95% of their lives up to five years underwater, but the adult, it will only live for a month or two at most. Pre-flight check, it's shivering its wings. Away it goes. This is its first flight. It's 
It's got plenty of company up there. The air is teeming with dragonflies. They are such powerful flies. They can accelerate 0 to 16 miles per hour in a fraction of a second. They can move all four wings independently. They can do anything a helicopter can do, but better and faster. I'd love to be able to fly like that. That sounds... What is it? I'll be back before dark. up with the medical notes, and I've just realized that your driver has a major heart problem. I'm really sorry, Nigel, but he can't risk it. Give me a call. I hope I'm not too late. Hi, Laura. How's everything going? I'm cutting it fine. Doug, everything ready for the night, Safari? All set. You need to eat some food. Your reserves are looking pretty low. How are you two feeling? Fine. Fine. Come on, cheer up everyone. Next destination is the Valley of the Spiders. like something's died. It'd be worth checking out. Do you fancy stretching your legs? Yes, I'd love to. 
vision and there'll be microbes on the meat they'll be producing heat and the carcass should stand out like a sore thumb oh I see that's what the stench is it's the corpse of the field vault I think what was that? scurrying spider stick close they're everywhere Moving. Sexton beetles. They're nature's undertakers. They bury the dead. Oh, isn't this macabre, Laura? These beetles, they only work at night. They're quite common. Find them in most gardens. And to male and female, they're working together. That corpse is the perfect larder for their babies. What they're trying to do is bury it underground, lay their eggs on the corpse, and then the grubs will feed on the meat. If any other beetles come now, they fight them off. They don't want to share their provisions. They're shaving bits of fur off. Oh, that's grotesque. They're skinning the corpse, and if things get difficult, they'll even amputate limbs to help get the thing underground. See, there's one there, right underneath the carcass. If they actually loosen the soil, any roots underneath the corpse, and then it slowly sinks underground. Most people don't realise it. This is going on in their gardens almost every night of the summer. When there's a dead bird, a vole or a shrew, these beetles bury them. Otherwise, gardens would be littered with tiny corpses. That's what's been making that terrifying noise. A shrew. Can't see very well. And they produce this amazing ultrasonic sound. Just like bats. They use it to navigate around. And prodigious appetite. They have to eat 90% of their body weight in a day. Tackle anything they can overpower. And she is munching into that worm. Just imagine if it had caught Laura. What a way to die. And its nose is twitching. I can see its nose twitching. I think she's on to me. Again, can you slow it down? Yeah. There we go. Tawny Owl. I didn't hear anything because Owl 
fast. They've got phenomenal feathers. They break up the airflow as it goes over the wind, so you can't hear the whoosh. They can swoop on their prey silently. Their ears are brilliant, so they can pinpoint the slightest rustling squeak of their prey. Bang on target! There! It's grabbing the shrew with its beak. It would have been a goner if it hadn't taken out the shrew. I think you two should get some keep. I'll keep watch. He's right. Our stats are running pretty low. We have to get a couple of hours in and we'll be in trouble. Bumblebee's doing, she's disengaged the muscles from the bases of her wings, she's vibrating those, generating lots and lots of heat, and that brings the muscles up to 30 degrees centigrade, much warmer than even on a summer's day, and that means she can fly well before honeybees and other insects in the garden, she's going to get first pickings at the pollen and the nectar, and she must be warm enough now. And yeah, away she goes. And that'll be the first flight of many today. Bumblebees, just to get one teaspoon of honey, has to fly over 300 miles and visit up to 80,000 flowers. You really are a busy bee. <laughs> Day two. We're nearing our resource position by the house. We're all feeling fine. There's no sign of any nasty side effects. Laura, how much time have we got? We're on schedule. As long as we have no more surprises. Why? I'm thinking that wall over there is a great chance to test out one of the most fun things about being tiny. I don't think you should risk it. You'll be all right. Trust me. You'll be all right, mate. Trust me. What am I doing? Oh. 
I'm only half an inch tall, the height of a fingernail, but I feel like a superhuman. That's the brilliant thing about being tiny. You get superhuman strength. And relatively speaking, my muscles are 150 times stronger than normal. I wish I was this powerful all the time. This is a cinch. <laughs> Easy peasy. I did that in just four and a half minutes. Climbing this wall, that's the equivalent of scaling the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I'm not even puffed out. Wow. 
I'm on top of the planter. Is everything okay down there? A bit of a drama. We should be on you in about a minute. How soon can you get down? Uh, not quite a minute. Well, it's not that long. Well, that's better. Yeah, I'm going to take a peek at it. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. 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 Yeah, it's I wonder if there's anyone at home. Can't see anything inside. Hello? Anyone there? Empty snail shells. They're dry. They're secure. Perfect home for other creepy crawlies. But there's nothing in this one. Not even a woodlouse. We're right on you now. Can you see us? There you are. <laughs> Can you see this, Laura? Find him, I'm taking charge. Charge. Oh. oh, what a fall. That was like falling off a cliff. If I had a fall like that and I was full size, I'd be dead by now. But that's one of the I weigh less than a pea, and when I fall, I bounce, and that's why there's only minor damage. Laura? Laura? Doug? There's something wrong with this. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Nigel. hit by a raindrop would be lethal. It's okay in here. It's amazing to think most creatures in the garden, they have to find shelter, just like me. I'd hate to be out in that. There's a wasp there, powerful flyer, and look, managing to take off even in this heavy rain.
Their armor plating can withstand really heavy bombardment. It looks like it's starting to ease off now. There's a shield bug, shaking its wing cases, getting rid of the water like a wet dog would do. The sheer variety of life down here. There could be as many as 8,000 different species in a garden like this. Mr. Rainstorm, where are you? We're on the terrace, over by Alert. the... Alert! Alert! Nigel's body temperature dropping below critical level. This is gonna stop! Nigel! Your body temperature is dropping fast. You need to take some of your energy drink. Okay. Well, there's a problem. I think it's being split. Okay. okay. You need to find somewhere warm. Use your thermal vision. There's a hot spot. Yeah, Laura, I'm going to head for the compost. We don't have any cameras in there. Activate your head cam so I can keep you in view. Okay, I'll try to do that. Hello, Laura. I'm going to move to the compost heap now. <laughs> I'm miles from the team, and now I'm heading even further away. I really need to warm up in the compost heap and get back to them as fast as possible. over 30 degrees, it's like a sauna. It's heaving with life. Keep going. You need all the heat you can get. grass snakes, compost heaps, they're perfect incubators, the right temperature and humidity. Females can have up to 40 eggs, so if more than one mum laid her eggs in here, this place could be seething with hundreds of grass snakes. And I've got to be careful, because if they mistake me for a frog or a worm, they gobble me up. And I do not want to fall in here. Oh, 
but it's all venomous. But if I fill in there, and swallow me whole and alive, I do not want that to happen. <laughs> Made it. Time check. 15 minutes remaining. Repeat, 15 minutes. I've come right through the compost heap. So glad I'm out of that compost heap. Warning! Imminent heart spasm detected. Proceed to resize position immediately. Your temperature's looking better, but you still need to get back as fast as you can. Okay. Coast looks clear in here. Just don't stop. Is everywhere. Oh, spiders, they're super speedy. One of the fastest spiders in the world. In this place, it's like walking through a minefield. They lay these silken snares, and if I stumble into one of those, the spider would pounce out. Fangs would go into me, and I would be dead. This is the scariest part of the journey for me. Where do you think you're going to come out? How should I know? Dodging deadly spiders. Where I come out, it's not entirely up to me. see you either. I think I've come out on the wrong side of the compost heap. I've got you. What is it, Laura? You're miles away. You're never going to get back to the truck in time. How long have we got? Even if we get to the top of the steps, you're just too far away! He's never gonna make it.
<laughs> Laura, I've been dropped off on the patio at the top of the steps. Where are you? Are you getting this? Did you know a wasp sting pumps venom into a chicken that may be specially formulated to cause as much pain as possible? into a spider's web. I never, I never thought I'd be glad to see a giant spider. The wasp's got no chance. Its sting is useless now. And my garden is starting to feel less like suburbia. More like the Serengeti. Everything out there eats something else. And all around me there are predators, and then there's even bigger predators eating the smaller ones. That wasp's finished. Nigel! <laughs> you made it! So good to see you. I made it, but only just. What took you two so long? Oh, I made a mistake. I went the wrong way. Alert! Alert! Vital signs! Critical! Vital signs! Critical! Doug! We've got two minutes to get into position! Stand by to resize as soon as we hit the beams! Life support, critical. Life support, critical. We're set! Go! 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 Good luck, everyone. Resize failed. Resize failed. What the hell's going on? It's not working! Try the backup circuit. Maybe a different access code. Nothing's responding! Just hurry up, man! I know what it is. What?
together. Three sides, 108% successful. Repeat, 108% successful. Oh. A little bit sideways. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Just couldn't have done that without you. Thank you. Yeah. Not bad, fellow rookie. <laughs> How do I feel? It's indescribable. Precisely 23 hours, 11 seconds of miniature size. I've seen things that I never thought I'd see. Look at that. It's going to transform right in front of my eyes. The front part of the body is glowing white hot. I've done things I could never do at normal size. Made it. I did that in just four and a half minutes. Climbing this wall, that's the equivalent of scaling the Eiffel Tower. I'll be the first human ever to take some honeydew direct from the bum of an aphid. And fingers crossed, I think I can trick the old girl. Some of the stuff I've seen has been really gruesome. Oh, that's grotesque. They're skinning the corpse. The wasp is being eaten alive. And she is munching into that worm. Just imagine if it had caught Laura. This is my team. What can I say? They faced up to every danger. It's the Larry Bird Feeder. Put right underneath it. I've used up at least nine lives. I never imagined it would be such a dangerous world down there. There are predators all over the place. Our spiders, they're super speedy. But above all, I've been dazzled by the sheer variety of life. Back to your pot. They're often dismissed as man-made places that don't shelter much wildlife at all. But as I've discovered, even a modest one like mine teams with a mind-boggling wealth of smaller animals. When I was a little kid, big reptiles inspired me. Komodo dragons, alligators, dinosaurs. But I've seen miniature creatures that are just as amazing, just outside my back door. From now on, my garden's never going to be the same again. <laughs> well done, guys. Hello. Hello. Check Laura. Can you pull up the Rothery cameras? See anything unusual? <laughs> yes, it's working. How about this one? It's working, Nigel. Come on. Fine. Right, both of you set. 
Ready. Ready. Let's hope this works. Good luck, everyone. I can't believe I begged to come on this. Uh, we'll be okay. All systems engaged. Stand by for compression. Initiating final countdown. 30 seconds. Do you feel alright? Sideways, we're being bombed by blues. Doug, we gotta get out alert, of here. Alert, alert. Move as far as you can for your foot now. seeing any serious side effects. Side effects? Well, according to physiological principles, our main risk factor is cardiac failure. Basically, Doug, if we don't resize within 23 hours, our stuff that was bombarding down on us and honeydew... That's just a posh name for bug poo, and I can't resist. I'll be the first human ever to take some honeydew direct from the bum of an aphid. Let's try this. Oh, it's such 
mixture of sugar here. You know, I like chocolate and stuff like that, but when sugar is that concentrated, it is disgusting. And in the summer, there is tons of it raining down on cars and houses. It's a nuisance sometimes, but to some animals, it's a very valuable commodity. One hug's waste is another one's dinner. Look up there. There's black ants, they're scurrying right in amongst the aphids. And they could slice the aphids in two, but they don't do that, they're too valuable. What they're actually doing is protecting them, because they want that honeydew. And you can see one there, it's caressing one of the green fly with its antennae, and gently stroking it, and there, there's a glistening drop of honeydew at the other end, that's a valuable food for the ants. Two animals depending upon each other. The ants get food, and in return, they're the green fly security force. They protect them. That's why these things infest plants in the... incoming predator. Nigel, you've got... Coffee. It's a bucket. <laughs> wow, three, four, five, six. A gorgeous seven-spot ladybird. Oh, I think I know what she's up to. I'm going to see if I can follow her. I've got to be a little careful here. This ladybird certainly isn't here to fly away. And she's here for lunch. 42 kinds of ladybirds in Britain. This one is a vicious predator. And I'd like her to move on a bit. Let me try something. as hard as nails, like a miniature armoured tank. And she's going straight for a cluster of aphids. I can hear the sound she's squelching away there. Welcome to my garden. Not the most exotic or far-flung of locations. And yet all around me, there's the most incredible miniature world. Scratch the surface of almost any garden, in fact, and you'll find it's jam-packed with literally thousands of tiny creatures, all of them locked in a deadly struggle for survival. Most of us completely ignore the world at our feet, but I've come up with a plan that I hope will change all that. I'm going to shrink myself and a team of people literally to the size of a bug. And we're going to explore that strange world, reveal some of the extraordinary animal dramas that happen in a garden like this nearly every single day. We'll be filmed by dozens of miniature cameras. They're scattered all around the garden. And our mission is to get from one end to the other. When we get to the terrace, that's where we'll expand back up to our normal size. From up here, it all looks pretty harmless. But I bet down there, when we come face to face with the garden monsters, it will be a very different story. of time. Open the door! I'm getting a bad feeling about this mission. 
transmission. Diary entry. We've shrunk down to just half an inch tall. There's all kinds of strange stuff happening to us. When I'm full size, my heart rate is around 60 beats a minute. But being tiny, it's shot up to over 3,000 beats a minute. years in the bush. I've never heard anything like that. We can hear much higher frequencies now. That's another side effect. What's happening? Well, I've got an idea about what's bombing us. I think it's safe for me to have a look. Oh, well, hold on. Where are you going? I won't be long. Be careful! Don't worry, this is a cinch. Here we go. I feel like Spider-Man. So powerful, so agile. Fantastic! Not too far, Nigel. Okay, stop going on. This is what we came for. It's as I thought. Look at them. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, this is magnificent. Wow. Laura, I'm eye to eye with a cluster of aphids. Gardeners call them green fly. I never imagined they'd be like this, just like living emeralds. Look at that. You can see... At the end of one of them, there's a glistening droplet shining in the sun. That's honeydew. That's the...